Thank you. Um, everybody's here but Emery. Uh, as always, Ruth will be video recording yeah, for the North Street yeah. Association. These are posted on uh, YouTube and on the Northampton DPW. No, just no? on the, oh, I don't, you don't post them. Do you, do you post the link? Post them. Yeah, it's on the DPW website. Um, we are going to end early today, 645, so that anybody who wants to go over to the levy uh, discussion can, uh, can get there in time. So, so we're going to have to pick things up and move quickly, but I think we have, uh, we have some good, uh, good things to talk about and hopefully move today. Um, yeah, the order here is reversed. Um, Everybody have a chance to look at the minute, minutes and do we want to, uh, any comments? And if move approval with Scrivener's there. Yeah. And I've got two or three of my yeah. um, um, second. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second. Approve for those two. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? What do you think, Jimmy Lee's? Unanimous. Jim. Any, um, Public comment? I'm leaving at 6 o'clock to set up the projection. So we better get our important business done before 6. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that's fine. Okay. Is that on the second floor? No, it's no, the cafeteria at the bottom. Okay. I just want to acknowledge Fred for being here almost every, every day. Not every meeting. I think he's been at everyone. And, and being at Actually, here. I was also here yesterday at the meeting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, our most devoted <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> at, at this <laughs> meeting? <laughs> the best time I, I, I really like. <laughs> yeah, I, I was a little confused myself. Well, I should have checked, checked the website, but I was. Okay, then um, I had sent out uh, a new fee algorithm today, and I see there's something here on the, is this, did Doug try and put this together from? It, it doesn't have your new thing, I don't think. Yeah, it does. Does it? Okay. It does. Doug yeah, took the total of your new method, Dan, and put it in a singular column. And called it Felton 3? Right, because mm -hmm. the one that Dan okay. sent out um, had sort of working versions of some of the other models. So this would be viewed as a complete summary with all up-to-date numbers. Okay. So nothing, uh, no. One of the things that doesn't show up here, but that I had looked at doing, was creating an average uh, for the single family, two family, and three family house. Um, did, you bring, did you bring copies of your spreadsheet? I did. You know, maybe that's the thing. I'll send this. Oh, you got big copies? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to my son because I couldn't read it. Also, did everybody um, print out the outline of the report just yep. so we could uh, yes yep. i'll take a copy of that if you have it yeah. okay. okay how do we're going to prepare our final report the model for the yeah. final report I got this for the yeah. Whoa! <laughs> I wouldn't even I looked at it and I wouldn't even attempt it. So I'll just go over, I guess, the, the real the key elements of the new yeah. algorithm. So, since I wasn't satisfied with the complicated one I had before, I thought I'd add yet another factor. <laughs> um, but there was some rationale to it. Um, you know, trying, looking at properties having um, at least sort of three different elements, one being a building, a building which has some intrinsic value, generally has people in it, cars coming and going, uh, potential uh, you know, being protected from a flood and or just contributing to, uh, to activity on the property. Then pavement which could be a driveway, could be crushed stone, could be asphalt, could be concrete, but has some hard surface to it, um, but not necessarily as uniformly impervious as a roof is. You know, almost every roof you can pretty much guarantee is a 95% or better 
unless it's <laughs> oh, <laughs> unless you like <laughs> unless you like getting wet. Um, and then pervious, which we know there's a whole range of pervious from lawns to pasture land to wooded areas, um, and I had provided uh, another sort of reference table that had some numbers. The reason I went, f I, I started to go through this exercise really was to try and make sure that there was some equity for, let's say, a, a, even a vacant lot that is paved, that has relatively no intrinsic value to it, not much activity, no building on it, but potentially paying, a, 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 and lots of runoff. Um, so needing to contribute, but not necessarily having either the means to contribute um, or necessarily the value to protect in my way of thinking that part of this flood control thing is about a value proposition relative to uh, protecting properties. Protecting properties. Um, so for buildings, um, it shows a value of one, I think, but I think it's actually 0.95 that got rounded up to one. Either way, it doesn't, that's not going to have a huge impact on it. Um, pavement, I used a 0.7, uh, which is sort of the low end of impervious surface provided in a, there's all kinds of tables that have runoff coefficients. Um, 0.7 was sort of the low end of that. And pervious, I used a 0.1, which was sort of an average, um, you see as low as 0.02 for wooded areas to, you know, up to 30% for, you know, well-packed uh, dirt, essentially. So, so the, and the thought again with Pervious was, you know, there's a lot of large, there could be a large undeveloped property, large acreage, probably in, in most conditions provides a net benefit, um, absorbing water under flood conditions has some degree of runoff. Um, so putting a limit to uh, the Pervious contribution of any property to be one acre. doesn't matter if you're 50 acres, 200 acres. If you're under an acre, then you pay based on, um, on the acreage. So the one acre value, I believe, came out to a uh, $100 contribution in this model. So the outcome, I mean, what, what this ended up doing in the aggregate, you can see in the lower right-hand corner, um, there's some numbers that represent the percentage contribution by each of the categories. So uh, residential ends up with, a, with 52, small residential, 52% of the burden, um, large res, res, residential, 10%, commercial, industrial, 22%, uh, and then the other two um, between 8 and 9%. It seemed to me that this was potentially better approaching equity for properties, not necessarily um, purely based on runoff coefficient alone um, of impervious. It's a it's a blend of sort of the three different property property types. Um, this is probably, as Rick pointed out earlier in his email, this is this type of approach is probably a minority of approaches. Um, but in this that 2005 stormwater manual put out by the New England Council, it is considered the most equitable and the least likely to uh, be challenged in court. But most complicated, most data intensive, most difficult to implement, probably of, of all. Um, so that's pretty much that was it. I thought I'd just give it one more try, discard the original um, Felton methods, and the Felton three, three is a charm. This is the last one. So. 220 on Pine Street's going to have to change after the next city council meeting. That's been said. Mm -hmm. So, Dan, I'd like to, you know, one of the things that's been fun about being on this task force is trying to think about it eight formulas we had before, and now we've got nine. And it's really compelling to me to try to think mathematically about what's equitable. And this is, I loved your first model, 
But this is even a further step in the direction of technical equity. So, and I, it's been so much fun to look at all these models and compare the numbers on the charts. Um, and so I, and one, I think our city is renowned for having people who were creative and determined. <laughs> so I think this is a, I really thank you for putting this model together with so much clarity. What you have? Six days. That's only at five. So thank you very much. And nights. And <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, nights. The days course. were working. That's it was only the nights. Yeah. <laughs> My concern about it, as much as I love its technical accuracy, is its complexity and difficulty to explain. And I, I you know, if we can figure out a way to this can be explained easily to the public. That'd be great. But I'm not an optimist. You know, I, although I admire the elegance of this approach. Any other comments, John? Going off of Bob's comments, what is this model? poses issues for the people that have to manage it, that something, Jim, that would be too costly as far as the models. When you look at the EIU, it's a pretty straightforward, doesn't really take much time, but is this going to require a lot of, a lot of labor? Is it labor intensive? Is it something that's going to require a lot of checking? Does it drive that cost up? In, in one of the um, Links that was sent out by Rick today it talks about you know those cost impacts of a couple communities where it got to be kind of prohibitive. It was like six figures, and it was just starting to climb, and they were starting to revisit. You know what is the right model? I don't think we have any real reservations about um, what Dan is proposing here. I think um, it is a fair statement that what Rick has proposed would be a little bit easier to implement, um, and there's still. Um, some data management issues with using assessor's data that that we would need to go through in order to implement it, but I think you know we could give that a give it a go, right? So it'd be a little more expensive to do Dan's model, but nothing prohibitive, is that right? I didn't say that. I no, mean, I don't okay. think we. I think that some of the data that uh, Dan had actually asked us for some data this week that we were unable to provide to him recently, and we, we apologize for that, but. Um, uh, there's just some uh, there's some data within the assessor's database that that would need to be put into a usable form to generate a bill, which isn't there now. So uh, I don't know exactly what that would cost. I don't think it would be a ton of money to yeah. to do, but we haven't asked that question. There might be some um, computer programming language that would be necessary to sort of take data out of the assessor's database and put it into a database that would be used for billing, but. Um, you know, like I said, I, I, I'm not sure that, you know, we would say that it's prohibitive. Okay. I, I, I said it was, I said nothing that was prohibitive. Yes. Yeah. Not as far as we can tell. Yeah. Just for some, to, to add on to that, I mean, the, the building footprint data that's here, I got, I went to the assessor database, pulled that out. It required a little bit of, you know, it took anywhere from 10 seconds to maybe 40 seconds of property to get that right. for the building. The, for any of the methods that we are talking about, any of the methods, the data requirements are identical with the exception of adding this. We're needing impervious data and gross data. We need that GIS data. For the residential, I'm not looking to get to the, we're looking to use you know average yeah. And, and get into get away from that. So for the commercial industrial, it's the only it's the same data for everybody's, with the exception of we would need the building footprint data. And also the the use codes have to be checked carefully in a couple of categories. You've heard that before from a number of people. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. you know before you send any bills, you would want to check every number. Yeah. Yeah. So. You know, by the very nature of how quickly the task force has moved, you know, there's, there's been uh, a lot of information presented, numbers crunched, and that sort of thing. But clearly, before the city would send a bill, you'd want to check all the numbers to make sure that they're accurate and correct. 
Dan, there's no uh, figure f for Smith College, for the fairgrounds, for Cooley Dick. Are those? I didn't have addresses for them. I couldn't pull it out. Okay. So, I mean, in, in my limited, yeah, that's true too. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that that information is available, actually. It's not. It's not, no. For Smith College, if you go up, if you look at Smith College, that was one thing that we did look at. Multiple and one of the reasons we didn't get back to you is that uh, Smith College is a pretty good example of that building data not being available in the assessor's um, database. So, you know, the, the good news is that, you know, from, from using GIS, you can get pretty good building footprint data from GIS as well. So there's different ways to do it. Um, and, and, but, and we can provide that too as well. And one of the one of the difficulties that I found, at the, you know, and I'm not sure how we dealt with it with any of the other methods, and I'm not sure we did actually. But when you start looking at the composite numbers at the bottom, the, any of those little caps, averages, things like that, they don't play out at the bottom. Yeah. So I ended up to try to, you know, again because we don't have an aggregate or building footprint. I looked at the percentages of the ones I did have, did an average of those, so it's a pretty small set of numbers, came up with 36%, which happens to be about, you know, not that far off of the residential, you know, 36 to, to 40, 46%, somewhere in there, again, to generate those aggregate numbers at the end. Okay. But I think that's true of all the models. I don't think any of the models, unless, correct me if I'm wrong, Jim, I'm not sure that the ag you know, that the way that we're doing this, that we've actually been able to get aggregate, accurate aggregate numbers at the bottom. Um, I don't think they're perfect, but I think they're, you know, I think they'll be close. Yeah, I think, but they're, I think they're reasonably accurate. That's not usable. Um, question on the building footprint uh, numbers compared to impervious. The actual building footprint numbers for, for the ones that are here, I got off the assessor's cards. Yeah. The, the averages by category, yeah. Yeah. I used an average of 36% I see. Okay. times impervious to come up with those because okay. there was no other way without having the entire database. Yeah. Couldn't do it. Mm. So that could be off. Dan, I've got two questions. One, probably just because I'm missing it and I don't understand it, but where do things like big apartment complexes, um, you know, big townhouse complexes, where do they figure in here? Well, they're in the total large residential. Large residential. Um, I'm just missing it, I guess. I just um, don't see it. I don't know. It's not on. Second line on the revenue total on your left, lower left. Second line. Oh, yeah. here, I'm sorry, I just didn't see it. You know, it. and I could, like Hathaway Farms, I probably could have done, but that would have probably taken me quite a while to come up with the building. Okay. So it's only in the lower column, the below the line. The shaded, no large the shaded area with the note. Yeah. You know, okay. So. okay. And then, just just for my own head, in the, the single family up on top, um, say for example, are you just using more or less like a flat face say for like for me I have an acre um, half an acre is woods and then half an acre is cleared with a house I have a deck and then I have a shed but it's built underneath the deck are you actually going to be looking at how much is pervious and impervious or is it just single family house boom with one acre and like my next door neighbor is all yard no shed no deck we're paying the same thing because we both have an acre Actually, it's even simpler than that. Oh, okay. Okay. $30. Oh, okay. Good. Okay. Averaged. Now, the, the thing that this doesn't also take into account, which I go back to, I think the first or second meeting that Fred brought us the histogram. Oh. We don't have that. That you really we should have. And that would determine which is what the right number is. If we had that, that number might go up or down. For the residential property. For the residential. So single family based on property size, where do they all yeah. fit? Boom. This is yeah. the, this is you know the within one standard deviation, and we're going to choose that, and that's going to be the number. We could you know we could do that. But Can I give me the data, and I'll make 
it's getting, it's getting all that data, and that's going to be that would that would be uh, the challenge. But the range is still, you know, it, it's between the eighty-five and one hundred sixty-eight dollars for yeah. single family. It's not a huge. So it would just be an average of those. Swing. It's like one hundred thirty-eight dollars no single family pay, and it's you know, and the three family just you know pays another twenty-four dollars. It's just it's not a huge swing. Manageable. Got it. Okay. All of your undeveloped properties would pay a hundred bucks. You know, broke so, would pay so hundred bucks. The under undeveloped is minimal. Hundred bucks. Minimal fee. Yeah. So this. So this somebody put something up. You know, shed, barn. Boom. And then they get popped. They get popped. <laughs> <laughs> so Dan, Canopies, tarps. I don't know. I'm starting to. <laughs> Just to be clear, so this is an effort to um, keep the burden more on residential and shifting it. Um, that's not, that's not necessarily the intent. No, right. That is an outcome of it. I, I don't think it's an outcome. No, that is, that is an intent that you have. It's, I think having it be, I think we look at the alternative. Yeah. If this thing doesn't go, it because it then goes to being a, um, an override, which is an 80-20 split. Yep. 83-20. If we, if we get it. So, if you can get it. Right. Exactly. So, so looking to get something that is, you know, if, if the method begins to approximate and approach something that is a little, that is more fair in that regard, I think that's a benefit. I don't think that's an intent. Okay. Because I think um, what maybe it was Emily who said the, the magnitude of that. We're talking about if we add two million to the city budget. Round numbers, a hundred. So we're really just talking about how we divide that 2% of the budget and shifting any burden within that 2%. The rest is as it is. So I, I don't have a problem with um, that shift that, say, a, a, an ERU system or, or method um, you know, accomplishes myself. And, you know, taking into account the impervious and, um, is what we're trying to do. To, you know, as we're looking, as we're getting closer and looking at the numbers and how, you know, what the bills are going to look like. Um, so I just wanted to make that point. I think uh, we should really, though, um, concentrate on, on equity, how they compare with each other and the classes rather than the amount. I'm not sure the council and the mayor have the stomach for $2 million. We'll see. But it could, you know, it could be a million and a half. A million. You know, that's twice what yeah, the city's spending three, now. Yeah. Me too. What? Well, it could, could be, be six. Yeah. Don't forget the six. There's always that fat fly hanging out there. I, uh, I think at this point uh, in time that that would, that you would, ex it would hit, we would need a different kind of city council than you've got. Well, I, I think if you start talking about a million and a half here, we might as well leave the table because you're not going to have the money to do the job. Hmm. Well, we may not be able to afford but that's, wonderful that's flood not, protection. This isn't our... Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Our, yeah. So if we give them a good formula, then they can you know, right. change it to whatever they decide they, they need. Whatever month they decide they want right. to raise using our formula. Right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It's ironic, it seems to me, that the formula which puts, in some ways, more value on human life. raises the fees for most residential properties. I'm not saying that's bad, uh, but it's, you know, when you look at through a different calculus, we've been, you're right that human lives and safety are a lot more viable. So that is an attempt to put that into the equity mix. I think, maybe I'm imputing motive for you that you didn't have, but. <laughs> Please lay on whatever you want. <laughs> well, that's an interesting way of looking at it, too. Philosophically, you were mentioning philosophies. If, um, if the, how I look at it is we're not really trying to count the water that we're processing. We're trying to get everyone to contribute. Yeah, that's right. 
So um, we're not really serving the, the rivers or the environment with this. We're serving people. And, and the people are going to pay this bill. And we're going to survive a flood the best way that we can as a city. We're going, you know, we can have localized floods. We can have the system start collapsing around us <laughs> if we don't do this. Right. So, you know, um, I think it's, you know, we talk about commons, and I think it's, it's, um, it's appropriate that we, that we talk about commons, but in the way that we, that we think that we're commonly involved in this and commonly responsible and starting to, uh, that's why the ERU appeals to me, um, because it is um, a very equal approach to this. And if we're talking about individuals and not properties, I, I appreciate that, that approach to it. So the philosophy behind it is good when we think about the common areas and the streets and the buildings that we all share ownership in, um, just like the things that we don't see underground. You know, I'm sure the DPW can attest to the nightmares you probably tour. wake up to. And <laughs> so that that's my concern that we that we get this money, we get it working to, to you know fix the system before it, it, it gets us. It's not coming from us. I mean, it's as soon as we disband, I, I feel like we all need to advocate for this in uh, whatever way we feel comfortable. Because it's, it's needed. It's overdue. Um, and $2 million is, I don't think we can drop below that. Say one more thing. It was great, Dan, that you did the little chart on the far right, lower right, the, the part, part for the different sectors. It's helpful to look at how much total residential properties pay versus how much <coughs> commercial one. Jim actually provided to this other table. Well, it's the same thing for everybody's model? It is for every, for all That's of the models. Great. Great. Thank Based on impervious surface. Based no. on impervious, yeah. and it, refl it absolutely okay. reflects yeah. identically um, the you know the impervious data yeah. in the third column over to the left. So and it's as, it is as simple as if you have impervious surface, you pay, mm -hmm. and that's you know it doesn't take into account all of the you know people that have. Large tracts of impervious surface yeah. already, as we've discussed, yeah. already have burdens placed on them that your average homeowner doesn't in regards to stormwater. Cleaning out cash bases on your own property and the upgrades that you have to do to, um, to maintain swales. It's whatever it is on your property. You know, there is you know, sweeping, keeping all the, the sediment, which you can either clean out of the cash basin or you're going to clean off your parking lot, you've got to deal with that. These are all costs that people with large parking lots pay. And I, 
I, I do feel, you know, and I'm a homeowner and a business owner in the city, so I have, I have both sides. I, I, I feel that the, you know, this is a fee, but it, it really feels like a tax, as we've all discussed. And it's a, it becomes tacked onto the burden for owning your property, and will have an impact on some level on property value in the city. There's just no way around that. So, nothing with me or uh, after? I, no, I just had a thought. I'm thinking as you're talk, talking, and sometimes my thoughts are farther ahead than what you're speaking, so if I'm laughing, it may not be. <laughs> On Rick's um, email that came out, he had an attachment. He just talked about, in general, skills and comments that were made. I thought they were pretty good. It talked about you know, the majority of the cities and countries, the counties that have gone through these processes, have based it um, on impervious, but they used the, you know, the ERU. Is there a way to have a hybrid? You know, I don't know if it's worth being different than what each one's are approved but could there be for your residential, the ERU, and then for the others, some other some other formula? Does that become a benefit if it's 52%? 52% is residential in these models. Does it make it easier for the maintenance of the, you know, collecting the data? The system? Yeah. The data, where it's just a strict boom fee, which is adjustable if it's $2 million, $3 million, $4 million. And then for your commercial properties and larger units, you follow your model, which has that fair. As far as selling it, yeah. it may present as an easier going to buy from yeah. Maybe it's easier to sell to the public. To get that accuracy, that level of accuracy. Because the ERU is something that is across the country. I mean, that's something that's proven. So you're proposing an ERU for residential and a more complex model for all your properties. Because you do bring up a good point, it gets into credits. I mean, somebody like Smith who's doing, you know, stormwater maintenance, you know, we have green roofs, we do have to clean out the catch basins, and you know, we have to provide these surveys. I mean, that's another cost factor that doesn't even appear in here. Right? No. Yeah. That commercial properties have to pay. Yeah. Well, Terry had, had brought up, you know, trying to tie in potentially land use mm -hmm. codes with and I've, and I've saw in the literature as well, sort of the intensity factor, mm -hmm. the intensity, you know, the, how the property is being used is, so you have your impervious factor, you know, we really like it complicated. You know. <laughs> and, uh, and intensity. Intense. <laughs> and intensity, yeah, your square footage times your, 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 your yeah. intensity of use, you know, is it, uh, you know, and I don't know, and, and that seems to me to actually become, you, know, you, know, you start getting a subject, subjective, this, but that may be another way to, to look at this, mm -hmm. you know, so residential will be, uh, would be one, and, you know, non-profits might be a point five, and commercial might be a point seven, I don't, you know, because mm -hmm. of the other burdens that they're already tasked with, from a stormwater management standpoint, mm -hmm. giving some credit right off the bat, you get credit, because you obviously have more costs associated with this big parking lot already. So, John, that's not unlike Terry and my basic model. We don't compute the residential fees on the basis of an ER, but we average them, and we could easily do that, I would think. Do you agree, Terry? Yes. Okay. I mean, the so that we can put ERUs in our model for residential, no problem. Mm -hmm. And then we have a two-part, two-factor Solution for the other, all other properties. Which was what? Which is based on gross area. And that's how we get everybody to pay something. So our model has a common assumption built in. If, we, if that's what means everybody pays something means, then our model, it's built in. You don't have to talk about the comments. You say you pay 20% of your fees based on your gross area. Totally. Just simply, so that's a word. Um, so, and I suppose we could add a third factor, but it's getting too complicated for me. What do you think, Terry? If 
if, if the, <clears throat> you know, this doesn't exactly answer your question, but l let me say this. The, your, your group, the philosophical framework that you come up with, I think can survive for decades. Uh, 50, 60, 70 years from now, if you people say, yep, a commons fee makes sense, I think we'll have a commons fee. The details will change, they'll come, they'll go. Um, but the philosophical underpinning of what you think is the way to go, I think no one's pushing back. I, frankly, we'd love to have some consensus so we can take it and run with it. Um, if your group comes up and says, we need the Felton factor, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> F squared. <laughs> if we need a Felton factor, then I think 50 years from now there will be a Felton factor folded into this. you want to uh, sort of improve behaviors, taxing, taxing behavior is a great way to improve behavior. So if you're wanting to, um, you know, uh, do BMP, you know, uh, on, our, on our storm system on every level, then, you know, we have this opportunity to <coughs> build swales and, you know, daylight pipe systems and, um, you know, really do innovative things. So. You know, I'm trying to look at it as an opportunity. It is money. It's not individually. I, I know $100 per family. Um, I'm very thankful uh, that, that that doesn't, you know, really make or break me. But some people, it, it matters. So, um, you know, we do have to be fair, we, but we do have to do this. So, we, you know, I, I appreciate everybody's work, Dan, and you beyond the pay on, on some of this work. And I think it could um, justify um, whatever formula that, that we can look at. Um, seeing as you know, math is done, you can really, you know, if you're a few pennies off from an ERU to, you know, down to the last square foot, um, I think that would be very supplemental information. If we're trying for simplicity, but backing it up with, with the data that, that we really <laughs> So I'm hoping we can all get behind a consensus, which is the Colhane Reckman model with ERUs for residential, or some big bounds towards ERUs for residential, and then a more elaborate model for all of the properties, which is at least two factors and maybe three, as long as already everybody pays something. Does that make sense? It affects the least amount of payers. Keep it simple for the majority of residents. Yes, yeah, you got your ERU. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. So that makes that the residential compromise. stuff very simple, and it's really not going to be any different than yeah. what the averaging we have, I don't think. You agree? Yeah. And then we but can it's recommend. It's also no different than, than the last method as well. That's right. So exactly. the, yeah. And then we, can, we should look at, we can recommend that the formula for all other properties, the could be a two part formula, could be three. So we we can get we can we all get behind that if I agree with that as a concept. I think there's a value to that <clears throat> that goes beyond just the our ability to calculate it. I think that there's in the mind when, when people start to really think about this, they're they're gonna quickly come to the conclusion that there's a difference between residential and anything else. And that if our model reflects that in the way, in the simplicity of calculation for the residential and the separation of, of the calculation, I think that it's going to, it's going to feel better. It may not actually be better, but it's going to feel better. People are going to, and, and likewise, there's going to be an acknowledgement that a one family house and a three family house are not the same thing. 
And so if you develop a system um, where, where it's very transparent to the, for the average pay, rate payer, the, the homeowner, um, and that the outcome is such that, because um, I've been thinking about this, you know, one acre versus the other. Neighborhoods tend to be really homogeneous. And if, if I've got a model where I go next door to my neighbor and we compare notes and the, the numbers are pretty much the same, I'm going to feel that that's a fair outcome, even if I don't understand how we got there. <laughs> okay? So, so I, think that, I think that as we get closer to this, if, if some of the tweaking we do, do falls into the category of cosmetic or making it easier to sell, um, I think that that's something we, we, ought, we, we might want to consider. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the other part of it is, is I think one of the, maybe this isn't our charge, um, but um, as we develop this, uh, who's going to write what? One of the things that we've done many times is when we've raised a concept, we've we've responded to it. Like, why did you do it this way? Okay. And I think it'd be useful to have like an FAQ or a set of talking points around the major issues. That, that say, okay, this was a major this was a major discussion. How did you land where you landed? Um, I think that that's going to be help. First off, it's going to help organize our thoughts. Secondly, it's going to help focus the city council. And thirdly, it's going to give the people who have to sell this thing some of the, some of the wherewithal to do it. On well, half a dozen different mm -hmm. topics. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think. Well, the most important part of this whole thing is going to be if you can cap this fund and if you can set it at a reasonable cap. I don't know that we can. I was in the uh, finance office this afternoon, and whether we do a revolving fund or a special revolving fund or an enterprise fund, can we cap it at two and a half, or can we cap it at the uh, cost of living? Um, we don't know that yet. Uh, the questions have gone into the state, and we expect an answer back soon. And um, I'll make that available. But I think we also we need to also have a sunset clause in there that in five years this will come back to the city council, and they'll look at it, or to the DPW, and they'll look at it and evaluate it, and. Are we doing what we wanted to do? You know, I think that's a very important part of it. You know. <clears throat> um, this is just a question uh, you touched on it, it's been touched on, and I can imagine some head scratching later wondering what your intent was. So the discussion was nudging the results in such a way that the property value breakdown in some way shapes or it would be convenient if the fee breakdown more or less mirrors property value breakdown. I think that's what you're thinking might be desirable. Whereas, for example, Rick's, some of the other plans clearly property on King Street pays much more for its square footage than a property, a residential property, for example. So those techniques create a cost for the commercial districts that is higher than their property value portion of the tax basis. I don't know if I'm saying this clearly, but you are. I'm asking we you touch it and move away and t the group as a group touch it and move away I wonder if there's any clarity about that is Dan's intention of redistributing things something that has support across the whole group uh, I for one um, feel as though that uh, we should not be charging industry any more than we charge residential I, I really feel that uh, we, we work, city council works so hard to get industry into the city of Northampton, and then you turn around and belt them with a higher bill than you're going to 
views on residential. I, I think it's wrong. But that's my feeling. It wouldn't necessarily be intent. It wouldn't be higher by design. It would just come out that way. <laughs> right? Because of the presence of impervious surface. Right. It's not that if there's, you, if, if it's you, not that there's a different you, formula that makes it worse for industry. Yeah. It's just that by the way industry designs and has their property to allow consumers to come on and workers to come on, all the things that bring value into the city, that we're now charging it. It's, we're charging for that flat area. Well, I understand. If, if, and, if, and if, it, if it can work out that way, I understand that. Because of a, they got a parking lot bigger than uh, you know, half of Smith College, for instance. You know, I mean, that, the stormwater comes off of that, and you're going you to take care of it. It does. Not a lot of those properties, in my experience, spend a lot of time cleaning cost of, of that is, is very relative to each individual, I think. Uh, if they're on a, a regular maintenance thing, that's one thing. So Rick, can you get behind what I just proposed? Be split? Yes. I can. Okay. I, I, I absolutely mm -hmm. can. Okay. Right. But anybody else? Anybody else? Do? Yeah, I like the idea. Keeping the, the residential simple and easy to understand, just a straight just flat rate for single, yeah. Yeah. double, and then more. Actually, I like the way um, Dan did the, the three steps for the yeah. for the others. Okay, can I side, can I side step up on that? Sure. Uh, I'd like to get back to Alex's point about the saleability of the, the dollar amount. Was your question answered with that in, the, in terms of one and a half million or two million? You, and you came back to it as deep. You have to change the makeup of the city council. I was unsettled with if, if that was answered to you. No, I just say uh, my point was that we shouldn't really concentrate on the bill. It's how much it's going to be? How much it's going to be it is more how it relates, how commercial, residential, and nonprofit. I'm a little curious. You know, when you think of value, I mean, the only things that have value set are, are commercial and and residential. But there's the whole nonprofit side of the city, which we don't have. It's 11, what, 11 percent of the of the surface area. Is it 11 percent of the value of the city? And does that make a difference to you? Well, I think part of the purpose of the whole inter the whole fee system is to draw in the nonprofits and get their fair share. Right. But when you're apportioning, I mean, we, we keep talking about uh, this 83.17, but it's not really 80. Right, right. That's right. It's a... Okay, and then uh, I understand Rick's uh, discussion and explanation on common fees, and that gets back to, you know, how it's apportioned, because we're talking about the saleability of this to the public, and the public is uh, the large part of the, if this were to vote, we were to have it vote, the large part of it is the residential piece. And if those people were to vote, whether it's $100 or $1,000, it's what are they voting on? And, and uh, usually from the business I'm in, people don't, if you don't see pipes, there's no you emotional don't see right value. <laughs> so even if it makes, you know, great, you know, something goes somewhere, sense, something gets yeah. here, it's not the emotional thing of what it is. So what I fear in, and I actually didn't want to say fear, but uh, what I'm, what I see is that oftentimes where this, as John said, this tax issue, you know, this is a rain tax, or a fear tax, or a reality tax. That's what I wrote down. So when you have to speak to, you know, friends, neighbors, compare bills, you have to, you have to explain it to them, so they're not being pressured, because it's a rain tax that everybody has to pay. Or it's a fear tax, which is somewhat sometimes what happens with uh, the school department, fire department, police department. You know, we're going to lose teachers, we're going to lose policemen. This is about uh, the common good that if the levy breaks, <laughs> it doesn't matter whether you live on Wall Street or you know the back street, you're done. So that that reality issue is what is the educational piece. Uh, 
uh, and that's a, that's a big part of how you know, selling this to the public is uh, is the key. And then that gets back to I do support what you said, okay. but I do not support the third part because okay. I think we're Make starting sense. to become too complex. And I'm not speaking when I say average people. Yeah. I'm just speaking as an average person. Anyone that just has to get their arms around this after we've struggled with it. Any average person, or above average person, or below average person is going to struggle. So we have to get to the saleability and the reality of it. So I do, I do appreciate how you dropped that in, and I, I would say we should move forward with that because it's a good framework to, okay. that's explainable. Sorry, long story short. That's, that's great. Thank you. Um, what do people think about the two versus three factors? There are different sets of factors in the two models. What's your third factor? We don't have a third factor. We just have impervious hair and gross area. And Dan has three the intensity. Three different factors than those. <laughs> well, I guess it's back to Jim. I'm doing some more. <laughs> <laughs> so we could charge Jim for next time to come up with the <laughs> four and the model with four names. <laughs> How's your heart? Oh, this is the new Reckman. My heart will be on vacation. <laughs> you're not here for you. Okay. Well, so, can we do a, a model for next week which has got ERU for residential, basically Rick's numbers? Well, they'll change, I think, won't they? I don't think so. Do we have another meeting or do we meet with <coughs> conference committee? No, we don't need to do that until July 8th. Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> the purpose of a year, just not to, not to really derail this yeah. conversation, but the purpose of a year is, is to, it's an equivalent residential unit which you can then use to apply to commercial, industrial, and all the other properties. It is sort of the foundational number. In and of itself, for, if we're looking to just simplify for residential, let's just simplify for residential. If you're going to have an ERU, then the reason you have it is to apply to everything else. Okay. So you just don't call it that. That's that be we your can, argument? We, well, I'm just saying <laughs> that, that an ERU is a specific thing, okay. and, it's, and it's just a way of dealing with impervious in a way that everybody can sort of compare and understand. I, I have a property, and they're a hundred uh, times my size. Yeah. They're going to pay a hundred times what I'm, pay, what I'm paying. It's as simple. It just breaks it down to that. So, and just there's, there's value to that. It's an accounting term, right? Yeah. I mean, that, yep. that's, that's the thing I was saying earlier. It's an accounting on. term. It's just an accounting term. Right. Right. But you're right, it's strict, literally. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It's, not, it's a fact. And it just breaks what it does. I mean, the simplistic yeah. of all of this, and all of these cogitations, you know, that would be in particular, but, you know, we've got a bunch of different models that have some math involved, is to look at, you know, ways of just not dealing with impervious. Just deal with impervious and say, you know what? You got a hard surface? Too bad. Too bad. Maybe, maybe Chris can speak a little bit better about the credits part of this. Maybe we can go about it with an ERU with a, a better set of credit systems uh, for, the, for the industrial and non residential. I don't know how that would work. It seems like there's a simplified set of, of things that homeowners can do, but all sorts of different things that businesses and industrial can do that maybe there's a different tier of I, yeah. percentage of credit. I would actually argue against using the credits as a way to get around those kinds of issues. I think that I think that we should really come up with a fee structure absent credits and then allow you to bring that in. If because it, in theory the city council could very easily say, we're not going to include credits. There's, there's no requirement that the system have a credit basis on it. Um, they, they may just decide it's too, I think, I think I would argue strongly against that position. Yeah. But there's no, there's no, there's no, you have to have a credit system within your fee structure. And as far as, as far as the, the equity issue, I think basing a portion of, 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 of your calculation on whether or not a credit is present as an effort to get around a certain right. problem. No. I just, I just, I'm, I'm not sure that's a good Window model. dressing. I think we should yeah. suggest that there be credit. Yeah. And suggest there be a cap and push this, push right. the boat down the river. 
I strongly think, suggest yeah. it should be a cop. Strongly uh, suggest. Yeah. Strongly recommend yeah. credit. Well, I think that, system, that you know, by the time we go, we'll have our answers from the state as to what we can do, whether we can cap it, whether we can make it a, a, a spe special reserve account. Even if we can't, we should strongly recommend it because that's a public record that yeah. when, we have to, yeah. when we have to meet the public, yeah. we'll have strongly recommended, regardless of the laws, the yeah. rules, we still strongly recommend yeah. that there should be a cap, mm -hmm. there should be a credit system. And let them figure out. Let them figure it out. Let the law take its course, but when the public sees our recommendation, they see that we are 100% in, 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 in favor of credit so people can be involved. So again, oh, yeah. that takes figuring out the two million dollar exactly. number out exactly. of our hands. Right. That's yeah. all. That, that all credit down. manual. Yes, yes. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. It's it's crazy. Is, yeah. yeah, and and you've gone, you know, to I don't know how many, and so, it's it's just so complicated. Yeah. yeah. You know? But we, I think, we should gather something of a credit manual and submit that along with this. Similar to this. Yeah. I think John there are some ideas. We agree that you know the industrial and the commercial side um, is going to be very interested in what's available for credits. I think you said that before too. So I, I, well, I know it's really ties into the whole education process. The engineering students. Right. Yeah, they get credits for the, the work that they do with the city on projects. <coughs> what's available in upcoming construction projects. We and we have interested in trying to minimize. I mean, we do that anyhow. Yeah. But, you know. And we have other institutions, not as big or important as Smith, but big ones, yeah. which are in the same situation. Sure. Sure. Dan, your, your equation, the, the building is 1, pavement is 0.7, pervious is 0.1. Is that in the mid-range of what engineering accepts? Point one was in the mid range for pervious. Point seven was sort of at the low end of you know, non building surfaces. Mid range would put it probably point eight to point eight five. So you chose those for the totals rather than for consistency? I chose those based, you know, I provided, you know, the rationale, you know, again, the Taking into consideration that pavement is you know, intact pavement, there's lots of different types of surfaces first right. Right, that that we need to define going into this. That we have, um, you know, that if someone rips up their asphalt, they still are going that driveway still qualifies. This sort of goes back to the beginning. Still qualifies as an impervious surface. Right. Not asphalt anymore. It's more absorptive, but that's a, that's a word, um, but it's not going to be at the point 0.9, or 0.95 that a new pavement would be. So it sort of accounts for a range of different types of surfaces, for a range of, you know, age of surfaces. Older pavement becomes cracked, becomes worn, uh, you get more seepage through it. So you can defend it as a, as a realistic... Uh, it's, you know, yeah, I could. I would, but it's definitely at the lower end. But the, the, the thought there was primarily, I mean, the, the main intent was to try and account for the burden that was already placed on business to deal with their paved surfaces. And the reason why, I didn't, with buildings, leave it at the max, because that seems to be where almost all of the easy incentives are. Rain barrels, off your gutters, cisterns, uh, you know, all of the things really are about getting the water off your roof because it's hard to get water off your property without putting a big, you know, collection of dry well on somebody else's property, which, yeah. So, so with credits and incentives, I would see that applying to a building, you know, to the building portion only. And the limit would be the maximum credit that you can get is if you can get 100, you know, 100% of what comes off your roof, you eliminate 100% of that, which on, you know, from a budgetary standpoint, we account for up to 25% of the entire budget. But that's where it would be, that's where it would be capped. And you could say that's the biggest swing that you would have would be 25% of the budget. If everybody in town kept all of their it's roof right. water, Rain which isn't going to happen. <laughs> so...
think you can meet him. Yeah, I've been a little quiet, just trying to get my head around it all. Um, I think in the last couple of meetings, I was not um, as excited about the Felton models because I did think that they were too complicated um, and would cause a headache for the department. But now I'm, I'm really starting to like this, and I do think that it is, I, I don't think that it would be too hard to sell to the public. I think it's explainable. You're building your driveway or your property. That's your bill. Um, and I also, I mean, what I really like about this is the way that the numbers are working out. I mean, just however the math <clears throat> is put together, I really, I, I like more of the burden being put, it on, put on residences. I thought that some of these bills for, um, Commercial properties were um, just insane. <laughs> I don't know how anyone could budget for that. Um, so um, I just I like the way that these numbers are working out, and I could absolutely get behind this model. So, I, I mean, right. last week we talked about adding two or three, and I, I at this and I think that every all all of the methods that we have. Discussed and there's, I mean, there's sort of three categories here. Is the ER the simple and pervious only, which the ERU covers that. Yeah. And then there's the ERU and Commons, which is a, has a different twist to it right. and, and might appeal to uh, people in a different way. And then there's the completely complicated, over math, overdone, and everybody would 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 <laughs> accuse me of, of overdoing it. Um, the F3 method. But I think we should just present pros and cons for the three methods to the city council. So each of these have merits. We could also go around. I, I took the matrix, this matrix that um, Emory had put together, and we could just go around and say, you know, look at, you know, who supports. Where's where is the majority of the consensus, and express that as well. So you know, four out of ten of us like this the best. You know, it's sort of, uh, you know, do we, would we want to pass it around and rate them? You know, one, two, three, I don't know. There's a lot of ways to deal with these types of, you know, do a weighted vote. Um, some way to give the council an idea, I mean, I, unless we can come to consensus. I'm not actually, I'm not opposed to the ER, ERU method. I think it's the simplest thing and easiest way for us to go. And we, we probably could have ended our meetings weeks ago. So what I propose is we take a straw poll now on the three methods. Generally. Just who likes them, which one best. Well, we've also got the idea that came up tonight of using the ERU method for the, yeah. the residences. And that would be the model that I would prefer, which takes something like an ERU yeah. and keeps our formula for everything else. But that's what, that is what you did already. This one, just, okay. you guys already have a sort of an average yeah. Not much. And if you, the only way you keep an ERU is if you're going to use it for okay. everybody else, because it, it, that's the number. Okay. And then we got Rick's ERU. Too. Well, I'm still thinking about what, what Jim said about <clears throat> the, uh, the business community feeling fairly treated, you know, as far as the you know, uh, one to one. Um, do you do you think that the ERU? Does that? Do you think the business community would feel um, fairly treated in, in that system? I think better. Better. Yeah. They would feel better. Better than which? Because better than any of them. Because the, the ERU. Because the ERU is yeah. purely based on impervious, and yeah. it actually is the most that burdensome. That would hammer them. Most yeah. burdensome yeah. to the yeah. death. That's ironic. Because it means it the death your, system. Your system more. is a lot. Less, they pay a lot less with mm -hmm. Fenton with uh, Felton three than they do the ERU, a lot less. Right, and it's the it's sort of the it's the yeah. way the numbers play out. Yeah. There's yeah. seven thousand homeowners. If you go up yeah. twenty dollars mm -hmm. per homeowner, that's a lot of money. It's one hundred forty thousand yeah. dollars that comes off yeah. of yeah. You know, some of the other properties. Maybe I shouldn't be touching that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm going to propose an alternative way of moving forward. I think that if, if we're going to focus on sort of three options um, as, as focal points of the discussion mock kind of thing, um, I would support that, but I would, I would recommend if we could. Um, and having said all that, this is the one we like best. Yeah. 
we do want to have yeah. because it's around one. That would mm. be number one. Number two is I don't think a revised version of the Matrix serves any purpose with the city council other than. <laughs> yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I think that I think that because my feeling is is that there are people who, and myself included. I mean, I don't really care. I've I've got I've become so fed up with the concept of commons. I don't even want to say it anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but I like the idea that everybody pays and that and that the city doesn't get a bill, and that's effectively what commons does. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but I think there'll be people who support or or don't support things based on where they sit within the models that we look at. Yeah. So that to try and tease out this thing, uh, you know, where we're on and now as individuals, I think our time would be better spent elsewhere. I yeah, I wouldn't, I was actually just looking to take the, the model. It's just a plan. Yeah, no, I, three I, models yeah. that we go through, irrespective of this, just yeah. having our names. Yeah, I, I... Okay, then I misunderstood. Yeah. I just, well, how many models are you going to send on to the council? Well, I think I think Dan just did a nice job of sort of summarizing where where we were, the sort of, you know, the the three... Because they represent sort of the three main issues. Right. Kind of, right? The ERU yeah. method, which is impervious only, the ERU and commons, which yeah. was the recommend call in, and I'm going to call mine, I'm going to get away from anything with an F in it, we call it the hydraulic acreage model. <laughs> in, 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 your last, in your last email, you said there was no proposed changes or additions. I think we should vote and see if we should have two or three. Because when you pro when you propose, oftentimes when you propose three, the third one is always yeah. junk, mm. and people dis disregard it. Yeah. So then you confuse people. But that's let's see if we can come up with. Let's see. Yeah, what, let's see if we want two, two or three. Out. Let's do yeah. that. Let's see if we we'll want two or three, and then which two we two or three we want, and then we can we we have something that we can go forward with. I, mean. I, I agree. I think two is plenty to send down to the council. Yeah. Yeah, me too. They're going to have a hard time to wrap their mind around mm -hmm. these. Well, maybe we can do one. Maybe it's really a matter fun. of us <laughs> doing this I, draw poll. I think we just agree. One or two exactly. or three. How many, you know, I'm not being a subchair, but how many in favor of one? That would be nice if we could do that. Yeah, huh? one would be nice. Yeah. And then drill down and try to pick one. Okay. Or two. Okay, oh, so, why don't so, you we'll, go ahead. so, right, so we'll have three on the docket to talk, to vote on, and then we'll see what, there's a draw poll for your first choice. Okay. So first choice. Yeah. So, everybody that wants ERU is first choice. Raise your hand. You've been consistent. I, I tried it. <laughs> He's a lonely soul. Everybody, everybody wants ERU and comments as a first choice. Raise your hand. So we have here, we have uh, Bob and uh, Jim and Dave. Hydraulic acreage. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. Is this, is this hydra, before, before I vote, is this hydraulic acreage with some sort of teasing out of residential or just straight with you? Hydraulic acreage with S residential S3. as fixed. As, Tiered. Okay. Yeah, you single, said you were going to average the. Yeah, single family. Down, yeah, single, single, single family. <laughs> but number one, number two. I, 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 do, Alex, I mean, Megan. I lean more towards John. the. Dan. F, F model? And Chris. Not the hydraulic. <laughs> I like the F. But I, I think... It's in the literature, by the way. Hydraulic acreage, by the way. Yeah. I think scared. Rick's case, as far as proposing the ERU, is, which is the common one that you see a lot out there, I, I think that has to be one of the two. Because that's the one that, if you do the research, it's going to come up. I mean, that's the right. common one that's out there. And you have to put the pros and cons to that. I, but it could also be... You know, and we, that's why if we, if we took all three, that one had the least support, but is also the simplest. Yeah, we all and it for everybody it. liked elements of it, and so it's it's out there. I think again, the city council ultimately will will they're going to go through all of it. We can shrub with five again, and we all get to vote on what the second choice is. 
which may rise to the <laughs> yeah, That's true. That's true. true. Let me just say, uh, we are you, as, as John said, that, that is the common technique. I didn't come right. up with yeah. it. I was surprised it yeah. wasn't offered yeah. as a choice, so I, I wanted to make yourself. sure yeah. I was a choice for us. Okay. So that's the one that I was a check and choice. We don't put it in. My, my yeah, yeah. that's the one yeah, that's going to pop say, well, what yeah. about the ERU? Right. Default. Almost. Second choice then, ERU or Commons. So for ERU, Rick, are you voting? <laughs> For first choice? Yes. For ERU, first second. choice? Second. Second choice. Second. 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 I'm first confused. Second. What are you doing? Second, second choice. Second choice. Is this ERU and Commons? Or We're just, no, just pure so ERU. ERU. Rick's so point. For the second choice, Rick's ERU point. or Commons, we're voting for ERU first, and then we'll vote for Commons second. Yeah. Oh, okay. So if you want the, our second it's choice, one or the to other. ERU. One or the other. You can't. You can't. No, he can vote for the other two. No. For his second yeah, choice. he can't vote for the other two. No, no, no. It's not the first choice. We might do it. Who's in support of the No, we've already done first choice. First choice is done. Second choice. Now everybody votes on second choice. And you can't vote for your first choice. Oh, you can vote. Oh, I see. So there's only two choices now. Is it ERU or there's Commons? Okay. And we have sure. there's total of ten votes. Okay. Okay. So you either vote okay. for ERU or you vote yeah. for Commons. So who wants to vote for ERU? So it's eight two. Rick is back in the game. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. So it's ERU and hydraulic acreage. Ha. F F F F. Please. Did you have the F F model? You mentioned that. I had the Felton factor. Yeah. Oh, Felton factor. That's where it all came from. Yeah. Yeah. That's, 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 that's punishment for something. I don't know why. It may not be in this life. <laughs> it may well be in this life. But that makes it pretty simple. Yeah, yeah it does. Yeah. It does. We actually have, we have good write-ups thanks to Jim. Jim and Doug on these. So you, you want to talk about reports? Yeah, let's talk about reports. Now. This is just my first cut, and I don't, you know, we, do, do, do we want to eliminate stuff? I heard discussions about not being too, like, not including this. I was thinking we provide, like, appendices with, like, a lot of this yeah, stuff that we produce, mm -hmm. but All your certain things may be more watch. confusing than, uh, than not, so. Well, we have to, I mean, we spend so much time explaining what that means. True. I'm just not... Yeah. We've got it down to two formulas. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most we've agreed on since I we know. started. I'm a, I'm a little worried, actually. Because <laughs> 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 so Yeah, pass some of those down this end, <laughs> would you? This last <laughs> model. What color are this, we on to? This hydraulic <laughs> acreage model you want that's coming down? in. No, thanks. It's the last one that's been brought in, and I, I am concerned that, you know, I just want to make sure that there's been enough discussion about it and we're not just, it's like, all right, let's get, move on and get through this. First, um, collectively, we're a much smarter room than we were two months ago. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, the fact that the, it's the most recent model uh, means that it has the legacy of everything that went before it. Mm -hmm. And we understand the issues better. So we're able to look much more specifically at what what's troubling us and what isn't. So I think you should just let it go. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's organically. Okay. It's it does organic. have your name. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's organically grown, and you could have saved us a lot of time if you'd done it too much. Ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, it would have, it would have, been, it would have died two <laughs> months ago. And I assume that this is all our consensus is based on the rough accuracy of the numbers that mm -hmm. Dan gave us yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. right. okay. yeah. Which is a whole right. other part of our And maybe we'll next time we'll, meet, issue. we'll have more information about properties that Dan was not able to put figures with. Mm -hmm. So we can see that. We're recommending general principles here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so, <coughs> so for the report, so the first section was sort of the 
you know, introductory summary of the issues, discussion on the EPA mandates, flood control, um, some of the major work scopes that were presented in, in Terry's presentation and the CDM report. These aren't big sections. I'm, you know, we're talking paragraph. one or two paragraphs. Paragraph. Paragraph. Uh, yeah, because that A part, the, the, the presentation that was given to us was given to City Council already, too, all that part of it. So. Right. So, 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 so somebody, is somebody interested in taking on section one and yeah I'll do that part if you want I'm gonna if it's okay with you Ruth I'm gonna send you three sentences on the CDM report okay. so we can just yeah, great. yeah that would be great because that's the part I'm not familiar with all right the next one principles of a stormwater utility Why do we think about having Mr. Larilla write that? More or less. I, I think we should I think we should give him the opportunity to, to unvolunteer himself. Yes. I, um, I, I suspect that there's gonna be an awful lot of last minute um, fact supplying that his time would be better spent on than actually drafting unless unless Jimmy really wants it. I mean we're happy to do whatever you even want us to do. That's a nice answer. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I think, one of the yeah. most difficult sections. It's going to require going through all the notes. And I'm wondering if there isn't a matrix for this within the state somewhere. You know, do we want to create a wheel, or is it already written up? Somewhere? Well, some of this is, yeah, like the yeah. stormwater well, manual, the, the 2005 yeah. report, ha does mm -hmm. have a lot of this, but someone still has to cut and paste and put yeah. it together. Regardless, it's an effort, yeah, and it's going to need to then account, um, yeah, there was that one, and then there's the 2005 one. Yeah. So, so t taking the stuff that's already been published, and then taking our notes and our discussions and how we how we felt about those issues internally is and maybe that's a two or three person job. So yeah, I was I was gonna I was gonna say two. give two or three people a shot at it or okay. you're one. I'm willing to to give it a shot. How how much do you think people are interested in reading? All right, how much of this is for the record? I think enough so that it, it well it captures the essence without a CDM report. A page to two pages? Two pages? I mean, this is probably going to be one of the longer sections only because this is what we've spent a lot of our time on. This is where fair and equitable comes in. Yeah. This is where, you know, but I would imagine. Really right, I, think, I, think, I, think, mm -hmm. I think two, this is definitely a two person. I can look on it with you. Okay, we should. Sure. So Alex and Meg, mm -hmm. great. Um, the fee models. Do we want to just discuss the two, and then provide all of, all of them as as written up by Jim as an appendix? These are all the models that we did, and the, then Thanks just so. discuss the two models so. that we've I think we just give them two. I think you should just give them the two. If they read well, on it, they will understand the true. depth of the work we did. But if we give them all eight models, no, I'm just saying that's that's an appendix. Yeah, throw their hands yeah. up in the air. Yeah, they're not even. It's not even be being discussed. It's not even being discussed. Okay. So that we, um, uh, that we or to make the record complete, we could wrong. say that we you know we <laughs> developed nine models. Yeah. These are the two that we recommend. Yeah. I'm my suggestion. The only thing I was suggesting is we take all of them. I mean, this is what you do from the engineer Jim. <laughs> I think Dan has a good idea here in terms of showing all the work that's been done. Yeah. And part of it comes back to this whole idea of legally defensible. I mean, the task force deliberations have been pretty impressive, and I think it's important that that be captured, even if it's just putting things in the appendix. It's typically what, from yeah. an engineering standpoint, you put all that back up. Yeah. No one looks at it, really, yeah. but if somebody wants to look at it. Yeah. You make it available 
And one supposes that in the course of discussing the virtues of each of those, and I guess I think that the creators of each model should write a description of what their logic was and make the arguments for the various factors, then we can all weigh in, but I think Dan and Rick ought to write up the, the logic of their plan. Why divide all of the calculations? These are for the plans that aren't recommended. I provide all the calculations and everything else in the appendage. But if you start going through this or that, maybe somebody would pick a piece out and say, oh, well, we've got to include that over here and start all over again. I think we've already had the discussion on that. Mm -hmm. And we've said this model and this model are the two models that could go. Sure. You, know? you think it shouldn't be in the report, period? Uh, no, I think uh, the details oh, shouldn't be. Okay. okay. But well, I think the, the report... I see what you're saying, because it says fee models considered. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In the end, yeah. No, these are going to be the fee models recommended. Yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. So but yeah. but do you, are you saying that we shouldn't include a, a all the models in the appendix? No, no. Include the models. But then to do a summary on top of it, no. No, just so we're just going to do the two yeah. that were recommended. So this is actually not considered. This is fee model recommended instead of considered. Yeah. Right. Okay. And, and I think like an introductory sentence or two. You know, we had eight or nine. There was the appendix. So these exactly. are the two that we just the knowledge and the work yeah. that we did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then other considerations. One thing I made a note on mine that I, th I thought we should include in there, we, we talked about making sure that City Council was the one that um, approved all the increases. A lot of us talked about that, but I had to leave early, so I don't know if that was voted on or even discussed further last week, because, like I said, I, I skipped out early. Are you it was other enough. considerations on that, though? I'm sorry? Are you in other considerations or even the Yeah, models? other considerations. Oh, right. okay. And we did talk about it, left Ruth, and I believe there was consensus that the best way to keep control of the rates was to have city council set the fee. Yeah, so that might be something we right? wanted to put yeah. in other considerations. Okay. And then we talked about caps. And okay, right. right. That. Yeah. The avenues that yeah. we talked about was yeah. uh, yeah. that the, the consideration of the recommendation of the fee would be from the, the conference committee and then it would go to oh, city right. council so on a recommendation from the conference committee. But the BPW recommended to the conference committee who right. had done recommended to the council. Right. That's the, that's the budget. Is, uh, I thought we all agreed that, uh, that there should be a rate increase cap. Oh, yeah. Rate of increase cap. I'm going to write that up as soon as I get it up. I'll write it up and are you doing the. You guys, you two want to do that yeah. together? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's what we'll do. Yeah, all you do is Jim and Chris. Yep. So let's and, move, let's and I'll get forward. some common language for a subset clause. Perfect. Perfect. Um, I'll do whatever Bob needs and cover the rest of the stuff. Yeah. Have a scanning word. So, John. Holy crap. John's going to edit and make the whole thing pull together. Excellent. So we send you anything you've written, but that's correct. Yeah, I'm going to be traveling, but that's fine. Okay. Send it to who? To John. Oh, okay. What are we doing and about deadlines? I, well, the other thing is that do we want, to, as people write sections up, I, I think it would be worthwhile to put it out. We want to see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. For comment yeah. and yeah. people might add so some stuff. Here first. Yeah. yeah, before mm -hmm. it goes okay. to John. And then we John could do it on a Google Drive. Um, I'm into another program. Um, <laughs> my only my <laughs> concern about that I'm, is I'm computer illiterate now. Yeah. Having having <laughs> done some having done some cooperative writing um, over time is that uh, you, you you really need to have a drop dead comment period. Um, and you get one go around at it. Um, and the deadline has a deadline. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. And because otherwise you have people parachuting in after you've done five revisions right. and you're just like, this yeah. Is yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Voice of experience. Yes. <laughs> yes. So do we want to have our next meeting be our first draft? Yeah. Okay. And 
I would want to use that meeting to final comments yeah. to circulate and just yeah. take the, the two hours together and go through and comment, pass it around, and do it that way, or do it on our own time. There is well, always a good date. That's six. I think I think the comments should be. You should have your comments ready when we're when we come in, not be adding to them during the meeting because that will we'll, we'll be here forever. So it, I don't know. I'm that's putting the burden on the writers. Do we really think we can um, do that in a week? Um, that's probably why I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't know. If it's it's not it's not the burden yeah. on the writers. Yeah. Yeah. And the right. pressure well, we, is we, sort we, of off. We're not talking yeah. about right. July 13th. Yeah. 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 Right. Right. Mm. Right. 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 So yeah. July 13th is when it has to be. July 8th. July 8th. So if we meet in two weeks, so skip next week. Meet the following week. That's when first so first drafts send things back and should, So when do we want to have drafts in before that meeting? Two days? Five o'clock? Three days? Or just the day of? No, no, no not the day of. No. How about by that Tuesday? Have them into who Five now? To everybody. To everybody. So everybody. Yeah, so oh, drafts. email them to yeah. everybody. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So it's, it's been postponed for. Oh, sorry. So no meeting the week right. on the sixth. No so meeting the, next week at all. So if we're if we're meeting on the 13th or 12th, 13th, that the can the writers have their writing involved drafts? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll try. Ten Final days. drafts by the 10th or the, the 11th or 10th. Yeah. That, that's a question for the writers. Yeah. Well, so uh, if we get the information. Yeah, but we can write it with. Yeah, you can get started. Yeah. yeah. And you'll get me the CDM stuff. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. June. You'll get that long so 10th. June 10th. Okay. So June 10th. Is that Monday? Final draft. Oh, 10th. 6-10. Meeting on 6-13. Uh, we meet at 5, right? 7 o'clock. Mm -hmm. So John will have reviewed it so by the 10th. Can do that, Jim? No, I think we okay. sent him to the group and then we all... No, the group will provide comments on the 10th. Right, and we'll, we'll meet be ready on the to 13th. Talk about our comments on and the 13th. meet on the 13th, okay. and then I'll take Conflict it from that on the 13th. Point. I'll just so talk comments, to you early. Coming with comments on the 13th. We'll discuss, yeah. make sure that we've got everything, and then at that point, Principal the original author will schools take the comments. And farewell parties on the 13th. Okay. Get them assembled okay. into their draft. The principal at Ryan Road Schools retiring and farewell parties on the 13th at five at four. Four to seven. Yeah. I just have to leave it yeah. early. That's all. And then Bob, do you want to take care Bob of getting all the appendices together, copied, and that's Monday? Um, really, it's. I mean, I assume that's basically in the we have it. It's all done. Yeah. 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 I can just stamp so, that stuff all together and organize. No, I'm sure I do. If, 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 when you meet on the 13th, I can't be on the 13th. Okay. In San Diego, but on the 13th, if you just take the appendices right. and just number them the way you want to go in, okay. I'll put them in the format. I'll scan them. Okay. I'll put them in the Jim and I can figure out how to do that. I'm happy to do that. Awesome. All right. And I just need to know which ones they are. Okay. I, I should have them. Okay. But if you I can just, if you can just tell me which ones are going in, then I'll incorporate <laughs> so the next official meeting is Thursday, June thirteenth, five o'clock here. Yep. Yes, yep. sir. I'm yeah. gonna miss you guys. <laughs> 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 we can see each other on the eighth. <laughs> you just cut my paycheck in half. What do we want? <laughs> You know what we ought to do is we ought to include um, in lieu of a, an executive summary because this thing isn't going to be all that long. We might want to um, have him do, since he was the one tasked of bringing the thing together, how it was convened and and um, it's just yeah, just something like that, a brief history <coughs> of and what our goals were in in trying to what the we charge we have our charge how we came to be yeah, our yeah, charge yeah. Maybe he can work with Ruth or yeah. With yeah. Ruth. yeah, like the summary of the process. But just more of yeah, but more of a okay. sort of like a personal introduction yeah. of, of the work yeah. rather than Not rather than bureaucratic rather than the timeline that I see yeah. Ruth coming up with kind of thing. Ruth, if you're gonna make that meeting at seven o'clock. I better get going. 
I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor. Amen. Amen. Woo-hoo! Making a, what do you say? <laughs> two, two initials.